Now, if you've been living this lifestyle or even just researching this lifestyle for any length of time, you've probably, like me, watched dozens of RV tour videos. Now, there are literally thousands of RV tour videos out there from basic travel trailers to people living in their RVs and luxurious million dollar RV. And let me tell you, there's some big lies and misconceptions that the majority of these videos contain. And actually, after living this lifestyle on both a part-time basis and a full-time basis, I could tell you a thing or two that you're not gonna see in those RV tour videos, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. If you're new here, my name is Charity, and in 2017, we began a life of travel in our RV. Now, our family has visited all of the lower 48 states now in this RV, and we have learned a ton along the way and we created this channel to really be a resource with all of you in the RV community, the YouTube community, some of the things and the hacks that we wish we would have known when we got started, and to also share what we've been learning as we go so you can benefit from our sometimes mistakes. Now, let's talk about RV tours, whether they're found online, on television, or given in person at an RV dealership or an RV show. They can sometimes paint an overly rosy picture of the RV lifestyle or even the features of a particular model. And after watching a lot of these tours, here are some common exaggerations, misconceptions, or in some cases, flat out lies perpetuated by some of these tours. Now, number one is space and layout. And let me tell you, some RV tours give the impression of spaciousness by using wide angle lenses or careful staging and they might claim a particular layout can accommodate a large number of people comfortably. Now, usually the number that an RV says that it sleeps doesn't take into account what size a person is. A great example of this could be maybe a dinette that converts into a bed where they'll say that sleeps too. No, 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 let me tell you, one. One is about what you're gonna get out of that. And then the actual usable space inside of an RV can be quite different once that you put everybody inside. I mean, 300 square feet, is still 300 square feet. And then add in a family, all of their belongings, and especially if you throw a pet or two in the mix, things can get tight really quick. Ask me how I know. Now, number two are the luxurious interiors you see on some of these tour videos. And this is especially true of how well a renovated RV looks on camera. Again, ask me how I know, because we personally have renovated not just one, but two RVs, and we'll talk more about that in a future video. But needless to say, the RV tour videos that show amazing finishes and interiors might make it feel like a high-end apartment or condo, but in reality, those materials might look really good on camera, but they're usually not super high quality or durable because especially in an RV, you have to consider how much something weighs. You can't use the highest of the high end granite for countertops or other items that just add a lot of weight. Wear and tear becomes super noticeable after just a few trips. And this is true of most all newer RVs where the materials and workmanship can actually be marginal at best. I mean, I can tell you, we get emails from some of you guys out there in the RV community on a weekly basis about RVs you guys own that are only a year or two old and are literally falling apart. Now repairs are a huge part of RV life because if you think about it, if you were moving say an actual house from place to place to place, things are gonna get loose, things are gonna break and RVs are no different. When we first started RVing, another experienced RVer told us a very wise saying and that is if you're not polishing your RV, you're fixing it. And then when you're not fixing it, you're polishing it and the circle goes around. It's seriously never ending either maintenance or repairs or sometimes both. Now, after watching a lot of these tour videos, I have to say there's probably one of the biggest lies of them all, and I'll be sharing that in just a few minutes, but number three lie is that some of these advanced gadgets and tech integrations, like big Wi-Fi boosters, here's the reality. The functionality of a lot of these items can actually depend upon ideal conditions. And let me tell you, there's never ideal conditions when you're living the RV lifestyle. For example, the efficiency of, say, air conditioners could be much less than what they're actually suggested to produce or rated for, or things like that fancy Wi-Fi booster probably is only gonna work really well in certain geographical areas where the conditions are just right. And not all the latest and the greatest when it comes to tech 
is what it's cracked up to be. Just ask an RV owner whose electronic leveling system failed and they can't even move their RV. Now, before we move on to the next big lie, let me know in the comments if any of this is resonating with you. And remember, our comments are really for you guys in the community as a whole. And we can all learn from everybody reading the comments on a video. I know I do every time that you guys leave us some comments. So let us know in the comments what you guys think about this, what you think about tour videos in general. Are they helpful? Are they not? Let us know. Now, the next misconception really has to do with costs. Now, remember the listed price of an RV during the tour or during an RV show might seem like a one-time cost, when in reality, the actual cost of RV ownership is so much more <laughs> than that initial purchase price. When you factor in things like maintenance, fuel, insurance, park or campground fees, potential costs for storage, if you are a part-timer and you can't have it at your place of residence, these things can really add up. Now, I recently shared a photo I ran across on our Instagram stories, and if you're not following us on Instagram, you should really go over there because we do share a ton of just fun stuff and kind of more real-time updates, photos of campgrounds, all that good stuff. Anyway, this particular photo is of a Halloween costume where for Halloween, you can become an RV owner, complete with empty pockets and busted knuckles from making repairs. <laughs> now, there are five more lies to come that I have seen perpetuated by RV tour videos, and I'm gonna get to that in just a a few minutes. Now, since I just mentioned campground costs, when it comes to campgrounds, one thing people ask us frequently is about our process for trip planning and finding campgrounds. And this last year, we were introduced to a new travel agency booking service called RV, and we have been using it ever since. Now, RV members like us get unlimited real-time availability when they're searching for campgrounds at over 4,000 RV parks and campgrounds. And if campsite's available, I can just book with one click, and then RV uses my profile to complete the reservation and send our confirmation number just within minutes. Now, I also like to use RV to find and book near impossible campsite cancellations at some of the greatest parks in America. Now, think like Yosemite, Glacier National Park, the Florida Keys, anybody? Now, we've been able to score some reservations with our RV membership at sold out locations, and we have the RV Pro plan, which is the best value because we get 10 sold out search scans every two minutes. So this improves our chances of scoring those warm weather location cancellations this winter when the competition is really, truly the toughest. Now this is super beneficial to be able to get in at popular state parks in the Southern areas of the US this winter because these areas will book up quickly, especially if you are in one of those areas where the snow's starting to fly up north. Now, I actually have several sold out searches running with my RV membership right now for the state parks down in the Florida Keys this winter. And it's super helpful as I start to trip plan for 2024 because RV routinely finds and books cancellations that are even eight to 12 months out from the arrival date as well. Now, I love using RV because whether I'm booking a campground for next week, next month, or next year, RV is always looking and booking for me. And since we do want this channel to be a resource for you guys in the RV community, we only talk about things that we're actually personally using, like RV. So we have partnered with RV for an exclusive 10% discount for our viewers only. So be sure to visit gratefulglamper.com forward slash RV or check out the link in the description below. And a huge thanks to RV for sponsoring this video and their continued support of our channel. Now, misconception number five is how some modern RV tours tout their green or eco-friendly features such as solar panels and composting toilets. Now, as an RVer who actually has a solar setup, let me be the first to tell you that the reality is while it is nice having a solar system when we're boondocking, it might not be as efficient as portrayed. For example, no sun, equals no charging. <laughs> In addition to the fact that just because a solar panel is rated for a certain number of watts, you rarely are actually getting that full amount of stated watts that that's rated for. And a lot of these numbers can be overly exaggerated. So you end up having to get more panels. It's, it's a whole thing. Just let's say it's not always what it's cracked up to be when you're presented to this in an RV tour video. Now, misconception number six is everything that is in an RV that's portrayed as easy to set up when in reality, there is a learning curve, especially for new RV owners. Now, when you're setting up camp, managing waste systems, or even driving an RV definitely takes practice. So once you get the hang of things, 
it's actually not that bad. But many end up learning in the school of hard knocks, which is another reason why we started this channel to share with you some of the things that we learned so you can avoid the mistakes. And we have a ton of tips and tricks in our videos about basic things like even just using a dump station. Now, number seven is probably the biggest lie of all, and that is the glamorization of the RV lifestyle. Now, RV tours, especially those that are geared towards promoting this lifestyle, often showcase the freedom of the open road. And don't get us wrong, why we love the RV lifestyle and we know many that do, it does have some amazing moments and we wouldn't trade our time on the road for anything else. But the scenes of the beachside campgrounds and the epic scenery are not going to be your everyday experience <laughs> with this lifestyle. The RV life comes with lots of challenges and not every campsite is picturesque. In fact, there's a lot of ones that uh, could be pretty dumpy, honestly. <laughs> and living in a confined space when it's on wheels isn't for everyone. <laughs> now, why RV tours can provide valuable insights into various models and floor plans and features, if you're considering this lifestyle, do your research or better yet, go rent an RV for a week or two and take this lifestyle for a test drive first before you decide to just jump and go all in on a full-time basis. And speaking of that, if you do choose a full-time lifestyle with an RV, have an exit strategy for what you wanna do when that season of full-time RV living is over because most people don't live this lifestyle for more than two, three, four, five years at a max. Now we've got some important announcements coming up in the next few weeks. So you wanna make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on to not miss any upcoming videos with some of these important announcements. Now I am gonna leave a video right up here with a full tour of our RV, which is close to 20 years old because you might just be surprised what a 20 year old RV can really look like. So if we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll catch you in the next video.